authorized Ford and Toyota dealerships serving the Cayman Islands. And Cayman Pharmacy Group, with locations in West Face and Professional Pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. And Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling Seaboard Marine at 949-4977. Coming to you live from Radio Canaan Studio. For the record. For the record. For the record. Hear Hear from from your your government government officials, officials, independents, and the opposition on issues that that matter to you. you. The record. Engage in an open dialogue between residents and lawmakers. For the record. For the record. The record. Informative, impartial, insightful. This is your talk show. 1 800 534 8255. Your calls, your input. This is For the Record. And now, your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome to For the Record. Today is Monday, the 22nd day of October 2018. I trust that everyone had an enjoyable weekend and uh, uh, that you're raring to go this morning. Those of you whose work week begins actually on Monday, today on Monday. There are some whose work week has begun before today. And to those, I say, you know, continue to work hard, especially if you enjoy the job that you are doing. I want to thank you, our listening and viewing audience, for allowing Radio Cayman and, by extension, for the record, into your homes, into your vehicles as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands, into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. For the record is a show produced by the staff and management of Radio Cayman, and it is geared towards keeping you abreast of issues as they arise and play out on the local, regional, and international scene. I am your host, Orit Connor, and you're welcome to join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7.30 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Our phone lines are always open. There is always someone there waiting to take your calls. If it isn't that beautiful radio voice of Miss Susan Watson, it is the voice of the Silver Fox, Mr. Paul Akai, this morning. You're welcome to join us in the conversation by calling us on our toll-free number provided courtesy of Flow. That toll-free number is 1-800-534-8255. You can also call us on 949-8037 and 949-6990. If you don't like to talk on the telephone, email us at For the Record. That is one word, For the Record at C-A-N-D-W dot K-Y. You can also... Send us a WhatsApp message. Our WhatsApp number is 926-3261. We encourage you to send us a text message or leave us a voice note, the contents of which will be played during the course of the show as well. And, of course, you can follow us, uh, follow us on YouTube simply by subscribing to Radio Cayman live stream. Well, folks, it is that time of the year again when... Pirates Week is coming around, and uh, I know many of you enjoy Pirates Week, or tourists enjoy it as well, and there are people who come to the Cayman Islands specifically uh, to participate or to watch the Pirate Week celebration as well. So it is my pleasure to have in the studio this morning with me none other than the Executive Director of the Pirates Week office, Miss Melanie McField. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Thanks for being here as well. Uh, I'd like you to get that mic about six or seven inches away from me. Oh, if we can, oh wait. Okay. Yeah, we'll push it a little further. Better? Yes, yeah, we have we have some new equipment in here now, very sensitive equipment <laughs> as well. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm used to being immediately in front of it. So okay, okay, so it's a pleasure to have you here, and I know that our um, listening and viewing audience would, uh, are out there anxious to know what will be happening this Pirates Week. <sighs> uh, so let's let's start off with the, with the dates, and uh, for some who may be still wondering. Uh, why the dates for Pirate Week changed, uh, we can refresh their memories on that as well and let them know exactly why we're where we're at in terms of the dates. So to start with the dates, Pirate Week kicks off with Cayman Brac, as it has traditionally. Mm -hmm. And the dates for the Brac are the 2nd through the 4th of November, which is next week. So we're less than two weeks away from Pirate Week. 
the official kickoff mm -hmm. for Grand Cayman. It is the eighth through the twelfth, and then we have Little Cayman finishing up the sixteenth to the eighteenth. But what has been reintroduced this year, and they're run completely independent, are the district days. Okay. And those dates are the f the second to the eighth of November, starting off with East End and finishing up with Georgetown. Okay. Okay. So. Our our change in format from the usual 10 days to 5 days was a decision made by the Tourism Attraction Board. And they felt in terms of, of selling the package to tourism worldwide, a 5-day festival was much easier to sell. And it, there wasn't that struggle of having to choose between which weekend to come for Pirates Week because that was always a challenge. So. Mm -hmm. Why not condense it into five days? And last year we introduced a combined district day, which was the public holiday, which ended Pirates Week. Um, the districts felt, let's go back to having our individual days this year, but we're still having the Monday public holiday. We're not calling it a combined district day, but we're calling it culture shop, Okay. which is exactly as it sounds, shopping for culture. So you get to, to taste, feel, see what the Cayman Islands is all about, all in one area. You get to, to participate in, in buying the, the arts and crafts that are for sale, seeing the demonstrations, tasting the food, hearing the beautiful, you know, traditional music, seeing the demonstrations happening on that Monday. But prior to that, if you want to go to East End or Northside, Bodentown, West Bay, Georgetown, and have some of that uniquely styled district food, then it's, it's all there for you. Sounds good. So let, let's repeat those dates again. Uh, Cayman Brack. The 2nd to the 4th. Uh -huh. And you have Grand Cayman, the 8th to the 12th. 12th yes. And Little Cayman, the 16th to the 18th. And you have the district days, the 2nd to the 8th. Okay. Uh, are there any any districts that will be combined uh, in, uh, or, or they will all have uh, their separate day? They're all, they will all have their separate day. Mm -hmm. So East Town will be on the 2nd. West Bay will be on the 5th. Northside on the 6th, Bodentown on the 7th, and Georgetown on the 8th. Okay. And w what is the level of involvement that you have, especially from those district uh, committees so, throughout the years? So the festival actually sponsors the float parade, the, the float submissions for the districts, mm -hmm. as well as their district heritage ambassador costume, formerly known as Festival Queen. Mm -hmm. So we're heavily involved with, with the committees from that, standpoint but we we do as much as we can to support them from a promotional standpoint for their district days and we're going to print a combined schedule that if you go to east end you want to know what's happening in in west bay the following day you have a schedule that shows you everything that's happening for all of the districts so you'll know what times when to go for the action the food or whatever suits your needs okay okay uh, tell us about the work that uh, has been uh, put into this. I, I, I'm sure that oh, uh, lots of work. As soon as, before uh, last year's finished, you were probably planning for, yeah, for, for we, this year as we well. Plan, huh? We plan the following year from October of the previous year. So we're planning 2019 before we've even had 2018. And we get quite a bit of requests for the dates, sometimes two, three years in advance. Because a lot of tourists want to book their, their timeshare. They have to reserve their timeshare at least a year or sometimes two years out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we get quite a bit of requests, you know, when are the 2019 dates? You know, do you have a schedule out for 2019? I'm like, no, we're still focusing on 2018. <laughs> but we try to get those dates out as quickly as possible. Okay. Now, I, I'm... I'm I've had a look at your website as well and lots of information on there. So for, for those persons who uh, want to know more about it, let's tell them about your website as well. Yes, yeah, so our website is piratesweekfestival.com. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a bit of literature on there for anyone asking any questions about where to go, where to eat, how to even get to the Cayman Islands, mm -hmm. and a very thorough schedule of what's happening from Cayman Brac straight through to Little Cayman. Of course, Grand Cayman is, is the biggest of the three festivals, so we have quite a bit of activity happening this year. Um, we've introduced, or reintroduced, I should say, the Turtle Release Program, 
Okay. So that's an initiative that we're we're joining forces with the Cayman Islands um, Turtle Center, mm-hmm. and we've also reintroduced the song competition, the national song competition. Okay, yeah. yeah. So yes. that's getting a lot of a lot of um, interest from our local music fraternity. Mm-hmm. We also have the underwater treasure hunt that we've brought back, and we are also bringing back the snapper cook-off. That's in conjunction with the Junior Youth Culinary Program, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and James Jamo, yes, Jamo heads that up. <laughs> so yes. we're really excited about, about those four events that are coming back. But, of course, we have our usual sporting activities, our kickoff party, our fireworks, which is, you know, probably the favorite of all of the, fi- the Pirates Week activities. We have the landing, of course. We have, um, what else do we have? We have a, an initiative as well called Pirates Against Plastic that we're excited about. So obviously, you know, the environment is something that's important, not just to, to the festival, but to the islands overall. Mm-hmm. And really reinforcing the importance of Single-use plastic is something that Pirates Week has taken on this year. Great, great. Yes, so, you know, our theme, Celebrating the Seas, is not only commemorating the 60th anniversary of the coat of arms, but it's also doing exactly that, celebrating the seas. Ocean conservation, you know, treating the environment the way it should be treated. And um, we have introduced a product to our food courts called Bagasse, which is made from sugar cane. So all of our vendors are expected to have their foods being served out of these products. And also the forks as well. Any container that you see there, except maybe for bottled water, which is, you know, we're, it, it's, Imported, it's an, yes. exactly, <laughs> it's, it's an introduction of the, of the theme. So we're not expecting the food court to be completely plastic free. It would be nice, but in an ideal world, it's not, it's not realistic yeah. to do that this mm-hmm. year. So we're trying our best to, to get it there and Maybe in 2019 or eight or 20, we'll have a completely plastic-free food court well, and festival. It, it's interesting that you uh, mention the turtle release that has been reintroduced, mm-hmm. and then the fight against uh, you know plastics. Because only this uh, last week, I was reading an article about um, the coast of Africa mm-hmm. and a young lady there who. Uh, has begun a campaign to clean up the beaches because many of the turtles also uh, go to nest on the yes. um, west coast of Africa. Mm-hmm. And what they have found is that one, the greatest threat uh, to the survival of turtles is the fact that they, they are plastics because they eat uh, a lot of the plastics. So uh, they mistaken you know. the plastic for jellyfish. Yes. Okay. okay so yes, you know, yes. and it's 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 hard sometimes for you and I to decipher the difference. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, imagine mm-hmm. a turtle and um, the netting and all of the the waste that that is disposed in the ocean. It's a serious threat, yeah. and we also have a vessel that's actually. On its way here to the Cayman Islands, I can't remember the name of it, <laughs> we'll find but it. that is exactly their mission, and Cayman will be their base to help cleaning up the Caribbean region, um, Caribbean Sea, in terms of the, the plastic and all the garbage that's in the ocean. Okay, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we'll continue our conversation with Ms. Melanie Markfield, the Executive Director of the Pirates Week office and we're going to have her drill down even deeper into some of these activities that will be taking place during Pirates Week. So folks, please stay tuned and we also want to remind you our phone lines are open if you have any comments, questions for Ms. Macfield as well. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. The Cayman Islands boasts of a long, colorful, and rich history. In tribute to our roots, Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands, is pleased to bring you the historical vignette series sponsored by Cayman National Bank. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. The Cayman Islands, he hath founded it upon the seas. Rudolph Oliver Evans. 1903 through 1997. Oliver Evans was married to Florence and they had nine children. He was a renowned maritime chef, a devoted father and husband, a seaman, and a church elder. 
His church members voted him Father of the Year for three consecutive years. Like most Caymanian men, his love of the sea gave him much experience of adventure. When the schooner Wilson was caught in the 1944 hurricane on its way from Honduras to Cayman, Oliver and his fellow crewmen chopped the mast down and with what was left of the sail made a storm anchor. This allowed the vessel to ride with its bow into the wind and saved it and its crew. His credo and his legacy to his children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren was, we are our own destiny. How we live our lives will determine how history will judge us. Radio Cayman's Historical Facts Vignettes are proudly brought to you by Cayman National with branches on all three Cayman Islands. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. Cayman National would like to remind our customers to activate their new chip cards as soon as possible. All cards were mailed out and we urge customers to check their mailbox regularly for their new card. Once received, please visit any of our 23 ATMs to activate your card. Doing a simple balance inquiry, which is free of charge, will activate your card. If you do not have a PIN or have forgotten your PIN, please visit one of our seven customer service centers to pin your card. Thank you for banking with us at Cayman National Bank. You remember the sale at Vant Motors? Yeah, the Your Sale, Your Choice. The one where you can get cash back or can put the savings to extend the warranty or upgrade features. Yes, it's still going on. But now you can get $8,000 off a new Ford Ranger truck. $8,000, you know? You for real? Come see for yourself. While they still have so much to choose from, from now through October. Save big during Your Sale, Your Choice at Vant Motors. With almost every vehicle on sale, you decide whether to get your dream ride at its lowest price. Take cash back at Add years to the warranty or service plan. Choose an add-on or mix your options. Your sale, your choice. Because you know what you need and Vant Motors will help you drive it home. Vant Motors on Walker's Road. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. Can you explain what a less than container load is for shipment and what your minimum charge is? Sure. A less than container load, or LCL, is any overseas shipment that does not require the full space of a container. At Seaboard, we have great rates for small packages. Just let us know the dimensions of your package and we'll help you out from there. Shipping shore to shore, Oh, my acid reflux is killing me. Why don't you get something from the grocery store? I need something better than any generic quick fix. You should go to West Bay Pharmacy and have a brief consultation with the pharmacist. I went in last week and within minutes I was back in the car and on the road. And you know what? No more acid reflux. How long did it take you? Minutes. Here, give them a call at 945-0777. West Bay Pharmacy is just around the corner with everything you need in the hours you need it. Visit us today for fast, efficient, and professional service. We are here as a team to assist you while taking care of your health. Call us today or visit our website at caymanpharmacy.com. A trip to New York City is the experience of a lifetime. Starting this December, Cayman Airways will be offering daily nonstop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City. That's right. Cayman Airways is going daily to New York City starting this December. Stroll through Central Park or take in the bright lights of Times Square. Enjoy a Broadway show or visit museums, the Empire State Building, and so much more. Whether you're visiting for business or pleasure, you'll fall in love with New York City. And daily nonstop flights from Grand Cayman aboard Cayman Airways starting this December. For details and to book, call Cayman Airways Reservations at 949-2311. Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com. Cruise tourism is a vital part of Cayman's economy. It is the government's responsibility to create an environment where our people can have an opportunity to grow and prosper today, tomorrow, and into the future. It is a myth that Cayman does not need cruise tourism. It is a fact that cruise passengers spend $200 million per year buying services from small businesses, tour operators, attractions, restaurants, and retail shops. Those funds stay right here, supporting our economy and communities. Support the pairs. Support our tourism. System 100. 1-800-534-8255. What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1-800-534-8255. Waiting to hear from you for the record with your host, Orrit Connor. 
Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. In the studio with me, we have Ms. Melanie McField, the Executive Director of the Pirates Week uh, office. We're talking about Pirates Week 2018 in the Cayman Islands, uh, in Cayman Brac. Uh, Pirates Week celebrations will take place uh, between the 2nd and the 4th of November. In Grand Cayman, it will be the 8th to the 12th of November and in Little Cayman it will be the 16th to the 18th of November so remember all of those dates because if you really love Pirates Week you probably will want to attend all of them. Ms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Ms>. McFeel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me again Mr. Connor. Um, as we were discussing one of the major changes this year for the festival we put out a the Tourism Attraction Board put out a request for proposal in April of this year, Mm -hmm. and the winning bidder was Monster Media. And what that entitled them to was the entertainment factor for the Friday and Saturday night, as well as ownership of the bars. So for the Friday night, there will be a certain area of Harbor Drive that's closed off specifically for that entertainment. Uh Mm -hmm. So there will be an admission, and the admission prices are very reasonable. And the even more reasonable is the entertainment lineup. There's going to be quite an exciting lineup for that night, including, as most of Caymanians know him, Beanie Man, and his full band. Also, Bungie Garland, who's a very popular soca artist, Nyla Blackman and Kerwin Dubois, who are also well-known in the the Soka Calypso Arena. And the starting, I think, pre-sold tickets are at 20. And if you go to our website, you can find out more about the prices. But that is probably one of the major changes this year. For the first time, we're we're not, I I wouldn't say the first time we're charging an admission because Pirates Week did charge an admission for certain parts of the Mm -hmm. entertainment many years ago. So it's been a while, but it's happening this year. Saturday night is Saturday all day is free of charge and Monday is also free of charge which is our culture shop so for those that aren't aware they can also check out Monster Media's site for more information or event pro for those tickets the other the other major I wouldn't say major but some of the other events that are happening that I'd like to give more details on including the national song competition that event is brought to the the festival in conjunction with the Cayman Music and Entertainment Association. Uh, Mr. jean Eric has been very, you know, involved in getting that competition off the ground. So I just want to say a big thank you to him and and his committee for helping out with that. The first prize is $5,000. The second prize is $3,000. And the third is $2,000. So the prizes are quite attractive. And I know we have quite a bit of talent here in the Cayman Islands not just vocally, but lyrically Mm -hmm, in writing. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's important to not just get up on stage and sing, but to be able to write your own lyrics. And we highly encourage anyone to, you know, get out of their comfort zone and do just that. You know, there are certain restrictions involved, certain rules and criteria, and that can also be found on our website. Um, You can submit more than one song. Mm -hmm. So you're not you're not restricted to just one one submission, and we're we're also going to have um, Mr. Cardinal De Costa. Hopefully, we'll have him on maybe sometime this week or next week, giving more of of a historical view of how the song competition came about because he was highly involved with that as well. Yes, and yes. I know Radio K Man is so well known for playing <laughs> his music. Oh yes. my goodness, <laughs> I love. We have we we also sell his his CD from the Pirate Suite gift shop as well. Excellent, so excellent. if you want to come and purchase, you know, some good old Pirate Suite music, check us. Okay. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to ask, um, traditionally, most of the, uh, the songs uh, in the Pirates, uh, in the competition, are usually the Calypso type or something like that. Now we have these days the young rappers and things. Do, we, do, do they get involved in that now as well? No, we want to keep, we want to keep the genre Caribbean okay, focused. Okay, so okay. You, have, you have quite a, a, a wide group to choose from. You have reggae, you have Calypso, soca, mm-hmm. you even have reggaeton, you know, the Latin feature as well. So, but no, no, 
Westernly influenced okay. music, okay. such as hip hop, you know, or R and B. So we're, we're trying to keep it as traditional as possible. And that's understandable. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. what that is. So, um, so that's the national song competition. And again, we encourage you can give us a call at nine four nine five zero seven eight, or you can check us out again on our website at piratesweekfestival dot com for more information on that. We're g- we're getting quite a few submissions for the competition. So we're really excited about that. And that's going to be held on the 10th of November. And that's the Saturday Mm -hmm. downtown on the main stage. Okay. And I believe it's from 7.15 to 8.30. Okay. Now, while we're talking music, Mm -hmm. um, and and I I, I note that the Cayman Islands uh, uh, Music Association is involved in it. Mm -hmm. There has always been this, even though sometimes it may be anecdotal, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the issue of the use of local artists Mm -hmm. during the uh, Pirates Week celebrations and the need to bring in foreign artists to to the Cayman Islands. Uh, You you want to talk about that? Right. So that that has been a a touchy subject at times. Mm -hmm. And yes, we, I would say Pirates Week uses probably more local artists than any other event on island. And I can say that with confidence. However, there is that international appeal. And we have to understand that as much as, as we have our local entertainment and we, we, we support them, mm-hmm. they're not supported like they should, but there's still there is a need for an international attraction for the festival. And you have to look at Pirates Week like it's a business. And the only way we really make fun uh, money during the festival is from the bars and the food courts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Those are our main revenue streams. If we sold a festival that had only local artists, I can say without a doubt we would not get as much support that we would if we had international mm-hmm, artists. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anyone can argue with that. So it's not that we bring in more international acts than we do local acts. Because we we hire local DJs, Mm -hmm. local dancers, musicians, you name it. And they outweigh by far any international entertainment that we bring in for Pirates Week. So you want people to have the best of both both worlds, really. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and they're, they're, they're the guests that come in for Pirates Week as well that enjoy seeing the local acts. But they also come to see international artists that they wouldn't normally get the opportunity mm-hmm, to see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So again, like you said, we have to we have to be able to as much as possible please the masses. So that's that's my take on that. <laughs> no, I, I, you you make some very good points there with that, and I think you know for for those uh, people who uh, would normally criticize the, that, you have given a, a, a quite a valid explanation because mm-hmm. you're going to have local acts, but you're going to have the international acts again. For those persons who would not have an opportunity to see mm-hmm. an international act someplace else. Here, they're able to come to the Cayman Islands and enjoy that, plus enjoy exactly. what we have locally as well. Exactly. Folks, we're going to the top of the hour at 8 o'clock for 8 o'clock news. When we return, the conversation with Miss Melanie McField, Executive Director of the Pirates Week uh, office. We will continue to talk with her about Pirates Week 2018 in the Cayman Islands. So please stay tuned. Radio Cayman Time Check is now 7.59. This time check is brought to you by our friends at Price Right. Price Right is Grand Cayman's warehouse shopping superstore. Making your dollar go further with huge savings and no membership fees. Get more of the things you use every day at the right price. But it's not just grocery and health and beauty. Price Right has a full range of products from office to automotive, patio furnishings to kitchen appliances, and even electronics. And since warehouse prices mean savings for you, everything is priced right at Price Right Grand Cayman's Warehouse Shopping Superstore. The voice of the Cayman Islands. 89.9 FM in Grand Cayman and 93.9 FM in Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Silver wings shining in the sunlight. Radio Cayman. Access information. Your community. News and information. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman.
From Radio Cayman's Newsroom, I'm Shanda Gallego with your latest news. A fire in a bottom town quarry that had been smoldering for the last three weeks was extinguished Thursday, and that according to officials at the Cayman Islands Fire Service and Department of Environmental Health. According to a statement from Government Information Service, following a slight delay to repair his excavator, the quarry owner had begun work on October 17th to meet the terms of a fire service permit to store bulk combustible materials and an abatement notice from DEH. Both the permit and the notice required work to be complete by October 22nd. Fire officers have been conducting daily checks of the site since they were first notified in late September. Served in early October, the fire service permit required the owner to dismantle the substantial piles of rubbish that prevented officers from safely and immediately extinguishing the fire. The statement goes on to say, meanwhile, the abatement notice filed in late September following a complaint from a member of the public called for the owner to stop the smoke and have the site cleared of debris and fenced off. Recent rains had a part to play in extinguishing the fire, leaving only a deep-seated smolder under the very large piles and very little smoke. Officials say the owner intends to sieve the contents, use the ash on his farm, and transport the rest to the Georgetown landfill. Any waste transferred to the DEH landfill is no longer a lit. In other local news, Kerry Olson teams up with Global Legal Insight on first edition of blockchain and cryptocurrency regulation. Radio Cayman's April Cummings has more. A cross-jurisdictional team of lawyers from Kerry Olson have contributed to Global Legal Insights' first edition of Blockchain and Cryptocurrency Regulation. It's a publication bringing together legal experts from across the globe to analyze the state of play in the blockchain, cryptocurrency, and electronic token space. According to a press release from Kerry Olson, there are more than 30 country chapters, as well as other general overviews looking at specific case studies and other topics relating to the digital assets industry. Kerry Olson lawyers provided the country chapters for all five of its legal jurisdictions, including the Cayman Islands. April Cummings, Radio Cayman News. Turning to regional news now, nearly a 1,000 people were reported to be in shelters overnight as flooding has severely affected parts of Trinidad and Tobago. More now from Carib Update's Uslan Crosby. One media report said that as many as 100,000 people, mainly in central Trinidad, have been affected by the floods one way or the other. Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, says he will approach Cabinet for funds to help with flood relief to those affected. He says he will seek to get $25 million initially for the relief effort. Rowley called the flooding a national disaster. According to the Prime Minister, the Defence Force, especially the Coast Guard and Fire Service, have been using small boats to reach residents stranded in their homes. Minister of National Security Stuart Young expressed concern that some people were seeking to exploit the disaster. Despite the pleas of the Prime Minister, the Commission of Police, me as the Minister of National Security and my fellow ministers and other citizens, there have been incidents of criminal elements in our society taking advantage of those who have gone through a disaster at this stage. And there have been some elements of persons even going around and picking up the destroyed appliances of people presumably to sell at scrap, as scrap iron. I stand here today as a Minister of National Security and also as a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, and I condemn that type of behavior. Trinidad's National Security Minister, Stuart Young. Meanwhile, an earthquake with a magnitude of 5.1 was felt in sections of the Twin Island Republic on Sunday afternoon. The Seismic Research Center at the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus reports the tremor had a depth of 80 kilometers. And another earthquake was reported on Saturday afternoon near Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados, a 4.2 magnitude earthquake that occurred at a depth of 60 kilometers. There were no reports of injuries or damages. We turn now to the BBC with the check of international news. That's it for me. From Radio Cayman's Newsroom, I'm Shanta Gallego. BBC News with Marion Marshall. Russia has warned it will be forced to take measures to restore the balance of nuclear power if the US goes ahead with its exit from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. The Kremlin said this would make the world a more dangerous place. President Trump said on Saturday that the US was leaving the treaty because Russia had breached it. Italy has defended its budget and spending plans, saying it had to take hard decisions to boost growth, even if it breached EU rules. But the government promised to take action if it missed its debt and deficit targets. The European Commission is expected to respond on Tuesday. 
The first joint exercise in the South China Sea is underway between China and some of its neighbours. Some of those taking part, like Vietnam and the Philippines, have territorial disputes over the area, and the six-day drill is, in part, aimed at avoiding misunderstandings at sea. BBC News. Access and information. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. You can find us. www.radiokman.gov.ky. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Kman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Kman. Residents are being advised of road closure and road works in the vicinity of Breezy Way, Redgate Road, and Airport Road from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Monday, October 22nd. The road work will be entirely on Breezy Way, and the access to Breezy Way from Redgate Road will be closed. Limited access to Breezy Way will be given only from the entry point of Owen Roberts Drive, commonly referred to as Airport Road. From 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Breezy Way Road will be closed, as will the access point from Redgate Road. Residents are being asked to access Breezy Way from Owen Roberts Drive today, Monday, October 22nd. Motorists are asked to proceed with caution and obey all traffic signs. We are now in the hurricane season, and to survive a hurricane, you need to be informed. If you have been informed by official sources that a hurricane is approaching the Cayman Islands, and you live in a low-lying area that is prone to flooding or near the beaches, which may be swept by high tides or storm waves, please seek a safe place and high ground. If the only way for you to get to a safe place is a road that is also likely to be flooded during a storm, please leave home early. Don't run the risk of being stranded. This has been a public service announcement from your community station, Radio Cayman. In financial news, world markets rose on Monday, brushing off lagging Chinese growth and a downgrade in Italy's credit rating after its lawmakers approved a budget plan with room for a higher deficit. Keeping score, Germany's DAX added 0.5 percent to 11,612.90, and France's CAC 40 was 0.2 percent higher at 5,096. Britain's FTSE 100 gained 0.4 percent to 7,078. On Wall Street, the future contract for the Dow Jones Jones Industrial Average was up 0.2% at 25,485. Standard & Poor's 500 futures edged 0.2% higher to 2,772. Italian lawmakers passed a draft budget that could raise the country's deficit to as much as 2.4 percent of gross domestic product. That's three times higher than promised by the previous government. In response, international credit rating agency Moody's downgraded Italy's ratings to BA3 while keeping its outlook stable. The agency said there was a material weakening in Italy's fiscal strength. That is the latest in financial news here on Radio Cayman. I'm Shanda Gallego. At Kirk's Home Center. This October at Kirk Home Center. Get grilling with a smokeless grill for $56.49. Save on power tools with Milwaukee's two-tool combo kits, complete with contractor bags, starting at $235.59. Hang fresh pressed clothes or dry clothes on a garment rack for $27.99. And store away items in an 18-gallon storage tote for $9.69. Home Center. Thousands of Caymanians work in our cruise tourism industry. It is a myth that Cayman does not need cruise tourism. It is a fact that 4,500 Caymanians work in this industry today. As taxi and tour operators, boat captains and crew, restaurateurs, retailers, water sports operators, and ambassadors at our attractions. If our cruise tourism industry is half of what it is today, what are we going to do with our people? The thousands of unemployed Caymanians. Support the peers. Support our tourism. Your weather update after 8 is brought to you by Brand Source Home Gallery, creating elegant bathrooms with European style fixtures and fittings. Good morning, Kim. Let's take a look at your latest weather conditions, courtesy of our friends at Brand Source. Present temperature 82 degrees Fahrenheit, but it feels like 89. Conditions on the outside, partly sunny. Present. Uh Wind conditions out of the northeast at 15 knots, humidity 83%.
Now, the barometric pressure is at 29.94 and holding. Synopsis for today, moderate winds and seas will continue across the Cayman area for the next 24 hours as a ridge of high pressure builds over the southeast U.S. Forecast for today, mainly fairly skies with very little chances of showers. Temperatures will rise to the upper 80s. Winds will be east to northeast at 10 to 15 knots with higher gusts. Seas will be moderate with wave heights of 3 to 5 feet. Later on this evening, partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of late night showers and possible thunder. Temperatures will fall to the upper 70s. Winds will be east to northeast at 10 to 15 knots. Seas will be moderate with wave heights of 3 to 5 feet. High tide is right now at this moment at 8.12. Low tide is going to be at 2.17 p.m. High at 8 p.m. tonight. For tomorrow, low tide is at 2.27 a.m. High at 8.45 a.m. Low at 2.48 p.m. And high at 8.21 p.m. Sunset is at 5.56 this evening. Sunrise for Tuesday at 6.23. The outlook is for similar weather conditions through Wednesday morning. That's your latest weather. Your weather update after 8 is brought to you by Brand Source Home Gallery. Creating elegant bathrooms with European-style fixtures and fittings. Hi, I'm remodeling our bathroom. I have a few questions. Sure. What are some ideas to make my bathroom feel larger? How do I know if I'm picking the right vanity? How do I choose a new toilet or a new countertop? Also, the lighting is terrible. Can I put a window or a skylight? And do I really need an exhaust fan? <laughs> You've come to the right place. At Brand Source, we custom design kitchen and baths, and our talented design team can help answer your questions. Whether you're looking for a modern, functional family bathroom or a luxurious personal retreat, we'll help create that beautiful space that makes your home yours. And if you're in a rush for a new look and have a limited budget, our ready-to-install bathroom vanities built with solid wood and countertops of the finest materials are a quick and easy remodeling solution. For the very best in custom-designed kitchens and baths, visit Brand Source Home Gallery on Dorsey Drive, Industrial Park, Cayman's new kitchen and bath center. Good morning, Cayman. Taking a look at traffic conditions, east-west arterial roads are looking quite uh, busy this morning time, but traffic is moving quite comfortably. And uh, uh, looking outside uh, King Sports Center, we have traffic heading on to the Linford Pearson Highway. Uh, it is a little bit uh, backed up in some areas. Crew road, similar situation. Uh, of course, getting on to Bobby Thompson Way by the intersection there with uh, Smith Road Crew Road. Uh, you'll expect some slight traffic delays. Getting onto Hulda Avenue, you'll have a free flow movement into Georgetown, Elgin Avenue, or up North Sound Way, whichever route you choose. Uh, most streets in Georgetown, a little bit busy, but traffic is moving quite good. Coming off the Estelle Tibbetts Highway, things are looking quite good out there as well. Traffic is moving quite good. West Bay Road is similar with uh, traffic heading out in that in both directions. Please look out for the uh, pedestrians visiting tourists on North Church Street, South Church Street in Georgetown and the environs. Buckle up and stay safe. For the record, is coming back. Look out for the latest sport report coming up. The Wesleyan Churches of the Cayman Island District is pleased to present their 6th Annual Youth Convention, Navigate, from October 23rd through 28th. This year's theme is focused on navigating your spiritual journey in a postmodern world. Featuring pastors Alvin Ebanks, John Gray High School counselor Christopher Murray, and visiting pastor Ronald Benjamin. The rise of technology, identity politics, and societal changes can create roadblocks in a young person's life. Remember, learn the skills to take charge of your spiritual journey. We need to get back to the basics of life. The 6th Annual Youth Convention by the Resident Churches of the Cayman Islands takes place in Northside at the Cradock Ebank Civic Center, October 23rd through the 28th. Bus services will be available nightly from Georgetown to Northside. For more information, contact Cassandra at 925-1930 or Pastor King on 916-5372. That's 925-1930 or 916-5372. Whoa. Radio Cayman's premier health show. For the health of it, with Tara Bush. Is brought to you on Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on 89.9 and 93.9 FM. Proudly brought to you by the Cayman Islands Civil Service Association. For more information on how you can become a member or the benefits of the CICSA, please visit www.cicsa.ky. For your convenience, the CICSA offices are open on Mondays from 9 to 12 p.m. and Thursdays from 1 to 4 p.m. For the health of it, with Tara Bush. 
In local sports, Cayman's national team heads to Canada this week in a tri-series and is set to face the Canadian national side for the second time in almost two years. The national team fared well against Canada in July of last year, losing two very close games in an intense series. National player Stacey Ann Kelly says there are major improvements to the team since their last encounter with Canada. I watched the older games. I watched the games last year, rather, when, when Canada came to Cayman. I had, I had to go and watch those on, on YouTube. I wasn't here. I was in the Europe playing basketball at the time. And one of the things I noted was that the shooters that we have this year, so our attackers are really stronger than before and our defense is just as strong so I think we fare even better against Canada this series as opposed to last year. Cayman leaves today for the three-day series starting October 25th through to the 27th in Canada. In sports elsewhere, Dodgers ace Clayton Kershaw got an early look at Fenway Park working out in shorts in the bullpen ahead of Tuesday night's World Series opener. The Dodgers arrived in Boston on Sunday a day after winning the NL pennant. Kershaw tossed a perfect ninth inning in a 5-1 to one Game 7 victory at Milwaukee, striking out two batters and throwing 15 pitches. Los Angeles had one scheduled workout at Fenway before facing the Red Sox. That session is set for late this afternoon. And caught from behind on a 71-yard run, Kerryon Johnson took some locker room ribbing, the kind that comes after a victory on the road. Johnson rushed for 158 yards Sunday to help the Detroit Lions beat Miami 32-21. to His teammates thought he should have had more, but safety Rashad Jones ran him down after the Lions' longest run in seven years. That is the latest in local sports here on Radio K-Man. I'm Shanda Gallego. Initiating system. For information that matter, for the record, with Orrit Connor continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me this morning. We have Ms. Melanie McField, who is the Executive Director of the Pirates Week office. We're talking about Pirates Week 2018. I'm going to ask Ms. McField to again repeat the dates for. Cayman Brack, Grand Cayman, and Little Cayman, and then we're going to get into the meat of the details in terms of what will be happening. Ms. McField. So the dates for Cayman Brack are the 2nd to the 4th, Grand mm-hmm. Cayman the 8th to the 12th, and Little Cayman the 16th to the 18th. And just to touch a bit on Cayman Brack and what's expected, I'd like to say um, Rochelle Dilbert really, really stepped up to the plate this year mm-hmm. uh, the, from the La Esperanza Bar and Restaurant. She has volunteered her time to put together the events happening on the BRAC this year, starting off with a happy hour on the Friday, as, as well as a kickoff party, both at La Esperanza. And then on the Saturday, we move into the Heritage Day celebrations, which will include demos, craft stalls, music, a kids' zone. And that's happening next to La Esperanza, but a, a, a bit in, in an open lot is what she explained to me. Mm-hmm. I haven't actually seen the venue, but from what I understand, it's it's a very nice location and it's easily accessible, enough parking, which is usually a, a a struggle for the the usual venue of the the Camembert celebration. So, mm-hmm. a big thank you to Rochelle for giving us that space to use. Also, the fireworks and a bonfire will be happening on that Saturday, and to close off on the Sunday will be a pirates farewell lunch. So that those are the activities that are happening on the Brack. And again, all of that information can be found on our website, website yeah. mm-hmm. or if. For those who know Rochelle, just give her a buzz and she can give you more information as well. And, of course, we have our Little Cayman celebration. So I'll speak about the Sister Islands first before I get into Grand Cayman. Sure. Because, obviously, Grand Cayman is quite lengthy. (laughs) (laughs) So Little Cayman, we have that on the 16th to the 18th. And if I may say, that is probably my favorite of the three festivals. Okay. It is so unique. It is so you know, the, the community really comes together and there's that, you know, friendly rivalry of the float competition and they're very secretive with, you know, <laughs> putting it together and I love it, absolutely love it. So we're going to have a official kickoff party at Hungry Iguana. It's either Hungry Iguana or McCoy's Lodge. I think we're still 
um, working out the details for that, Mm -hmm. as well as fireworks on that night. Saturday, of course, there's a float parade, and that starts at Heddo Bay, followed by a costume competition and more fireworks. And we also have a pirate's party happening, and I think that's the event that's happening at McCoy's Lodge. And then we finish up on Sunday, again, at McCoy's Lodge with the Pirate's Farewell Lunch, and that's the Little Cayman activities. So really looking forward to that. Now for Grand Cayman, we have the, the week starting out with Thursday, the 8th of November, with a happy hour and an official kickoff party at Royal Palms. Royal Palms has come on board for both events this year, so a big thank you for their, for their support and their sponsorship. On Friday, we have the Pirates Week 5K. We have our, obviously our food festival that's happening. We have fireworks crews also, and those tickets can be purchased um, at our office. We have two vessels available for those who are interested in looking at the fireworks from a different view. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, those crews run from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And the fireworks is at, I think, 8 o'clock, if I'm correct. There's so much information, I can't, <laughs> can't remember it all. Yes, the fireworks starts at 8 p.m. And do we know the so, cost of the cruise? Oh, um, yes. So the cost, the cost of the cruise, $40 for adults, 20 for children. And uh, those are quite reasonable, and they come with a welcome beverage as well. Mm-hmm. We have the, also on Friday night, obviously the fireworks, we have the waterfront sound invasion, and that's what I mentioned earlier. That's hosted by Monster Media. And that moves us into Saturday with the 5K Sea Swim at Governor's Beach. Then we have our Pirates Against Plastic public beach cleanup. Now, there's two beach cleanups during the festival period in Grand Cayman. There's one for the public, which happens on that Saturday, um, November 10th. And then we have one just for our what we call volunteerism beach cleanup. And what that does, that involves the visitors that come for Pirates Week Mm -hmm. who Mm -hmm. want to volunteer and and be a part of, of, you know, some community service to the Cayman Islands. So that happens on the Monday. On Saturday, back to Saturday schedule, we have our one of my favorites, our pooch parade. And it's exactly what it is. Dogs (laughs) in a parade, Uh their pirate outfits. And there's lots of prizes to be won for, for your pooch. And all of the funds made from that event go to the Humane Society. Great, great. And we have the Cardboard Boat Regatta. That's also happening on the Saturday on Hogsty Bay. And, of course, our food festival again, which is followed by... The food festival starts at 1 p.m., but it goes all the way through to midnight. So you can get your favorite food starting from 1 straight through to 12 a.m. We have the pre-landing. We have... Sorry. We have our float parade, our landing pageant which is our sea invasion by pirates. And this year we have something a little new. We have our first ever fighting governor. (laughs) So he's really going to be defending our islands from the pirates. So that's something quite interesting to come out and see. And I know a lot of people um, may not be aware, but the big island, which is the one of the vessels we used last year is one of our pirate vessels again this year. Mm -hmm. It is not the Jolly Roger. Um, We didn't use the Jolly Roger last year, and we weren't intending to use it this year. Okay. Um, So we have the the blue sail, blue, I forgot what it's called. It's it's actually called Splendor of the Wind, but it's Blue Sky Sailings that's putting on the other vessel, which is the governor's private yacht. And he's going to go out for a sail and check out the, the horizon and, Something is going to happen after that, which I can't say. (laughs) So those two vessels will be part of our... We may have to bring bring the British warships into... (laughs) Yep, you will have to do just that. To rescue him, huh? (laughs) Yes. But the public can also be a part of of the invasion as well. We have um, the Carib Princess, and I think that holds about 100 plus people. And those tickets are also for sale for $10. So you dress as your favorite pirate character, and you get to be a part of that invasion too. Okay. okay. So, And you can join up with the full parade as soon as you get off of the, of the vessel. We also have the District Heritage Ambassador Costume Competition, and that's happening at 5.30 right after the float parade. 
We have our Teen Up Street Dance. And then we go into the Pirate Suite National Song Competition. And we, we talked a bit about that earlier. And then again, ending with the usual street dance. Mm-hmm. But again, this is hosted by Monster Media with the Waterfront Sound Invasion. So that's your Saturday's schedule. Okay. Uh, can, can, can we stay there for a minute yes. and talk uh, a little bit um, about the, the float parade? Mm-hmm. And uh, are there any restrictions, any rules of the road for uh, that you want uh, persons on those yes. floats to, to observe? Yes. One of, one of the, if not the most important thing for the festival is maintaining safety, safety. a high level of safety. And we have some of the best road marshals are the best (laughs) road marshals, headed by none other than our very own Marcus Gramley. Uh, He has been volunteering for the festival for five years, and honestly, I don't know what I would do without him. He's actually building our float as we speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, Marcus and his crew, just a big shout-out to them. And the restrictions we have, we encourage people to submit floats. They don't have to be 40 feet long. You know, there's this this perception that, you know, the bigger it is, the better. But it's so much more work. You know, you can have a float that's 15 feet long, you know, which would be considered um, a smaller float mm-hmm. or even smaller than that. Um, it's about being creative and, and, you know, that community spirit and getting involved and, and having your team from work, for example, put together something that's incredible, but it was something that you guys did together. Mm-hmm. That's the whole meaning behind, you know, submitting a float. Um, obviously, there's the, the competitive element, and we don't want to discourage people from that because we do have some very attractive cash prizes. We have over 10000 in, in prizes for the float parade. Um, there's also the, you know, there there's quite a few rules and, and, and criteria as part of what's required for the floats. And they're, they're, that can also be found on our website. I can't remember off the top of my head everything, but it's very detailed and it's very straightforward. There's the registration, the, the application form, mm-hmm. where you can submit both, per, you can submit for both parades. There's the day parade and the night parade. And we can talk about that some more um, when we get into the Monday's events. But safety is, is above all when it comes to the float parade and just you know being responsible we have parade marshal shirts for all of the marshals not just our marshals but for any marshal that's in the you know for the float so we will be having a meeting i believe next week to discuss any questions relating to the float parade and we encourage everyone to you know start cracking down and, and getting their, their float together and submitting that for the festival. And you, you would expect those uh, persons who have floats, the drivers and the person who's in charge of the float, to, to, to enforce the rules that you have in place Absolutely. for those persons who are actually on those floats as yes, well. Yes, and know, they will know. be disqualified if they're not enforced. You know, mm-hmm. So we, we take it very seriously, and the judges look out for all of that as well. So there there's point deductions for certain certain areas that you fall short of and there's complete disqualification if other things are not adhered to. So we're we're very serious about that. Okay, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we return, the conversation with Ms. Melanie McField, Executive Director of the Pirates Week Office, talking about Pirates Week 2018. Please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. At for, Seaboard for, Marine, for, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. Hi, I'm thinking of buying a car from the States. Which port do you ship out of? Hi, we ship out of Miami, Houston, and Brooklyn. Just let us know your port of choice and we can provide you with a quotation and answer any questions you may have on insuring and protecting your vehicle during its journey. Shipping shore to shore, sea. 
remember the sale at Vant Motors? Yeah, the your sale, your choice. The one where you can get cash back or can put the savings to extend the warranty or upgrade features. Yes, it's still going on. But now you can get $8,000 off a new Ford Ranger truck. $8,000, you know? You for real? Come see for yourself while they still have so much to choose from from now through October. Save big during your sale, your choice at Vant Motors. With almost every vehicle on sale, you decide whether to get your dream ride at its lowest price. Take cash back, add years to the warranty or service plan. Choose an add-on or mix your options. Your sale, your choice. Because you know what you need and Vant Motors will help you drive it home. Vant Motors on Walker's Road. Are you kidding me? What's wrong? I ran out of my meds and I have an interview in about an hour. Why not call CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy? They'll be able to help. You think so? Absolutely. Their pharmacists are brilliant for fast, efficient and professional service. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy provides you with more than just prescriptions. We strive to make your health our concern. We recognize the complexities of pharmaceuticals and the need to personalize your care. That is why we offer personalized one-on-one counseling. Call us today or visit our website at caymanpharmacy.com. Sometimes things just don't go as planned. That's why you need contractors all risk insurance from Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Ensure you're covered in the event of property damage and third-party injury or damage claims during your construction projects. And with Fidelity Insurance Brokers, you can be sure you are getting competitive pricing and superior customer service. Call us today for a free quote. Fidelity, we're good for you. System one loaded. one 800 534 What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1-800-534-8255. Waiting to hear from you. For the record, with your host, Arrett Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. It is my pleasure to have in the studio with me this morning, Ms. Melanie McField, the Executive Director of the Pirates Week office, and we're talking about Pirates Week 2018, which is right around the corner. Lots of activities going on. If you uh, have not already made plans for this, then make certain that you do. And those of you who are listening to us overseas as well, there's still enough time for you to get here and join in the celebrations, yes. Miss Ma- Miss Melanie. And the best way to get here is via Cayman Airways. Cayman Airways, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we have direct flights. Cayman Airways we- from New York starting... In uh, over oh, uh, December, so that you know, direct flight from New York won't start until December. But oh, they uh, won't start until you sure because I, th- I think they have direct flights on now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, yes, you, you have uh, they're gonna have daily, direct oh, daily, flight, direct daily, direct flights, flights. Oh, wow. daily, wow. daily starting in December. That's, that's so you awesome. still have the regular schedule mm-hmm. now, but daily, daily flights, yes, very yeah. nice, very yes. nice. Um, Kim and Kim of course, is one of the biggest supporters of the festival and the official. Airline, Carrier. yes, the official yes. airline uh, for Pirates Week, yes. uh-huh. and I, I, we can't thank them enough for getting all of our entertainers here, our pirate characters, and you name it, all of our tourists and, and visitors, of course, that come in for Pirates Week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So a big thank you to Kim and Airways, and um, and if I may, I just want to say thank you to Radio Cayman as well, who has also been a major support for the festival for many many years, and Radio Cayman will also be broadcasting the landing live Mm -hmm. on that Saturday. So that's something to always look forward to. If you're not able to physically get out to the festival, you can hear what's happening on Radio Cayman with the float parade and the the landing. Definitely. So back to our schedule. On Sunday, we have um, one of our favorite running events, To Hell and Back. And that is one that attracts quite a few tourists. Yes. So... um, for both of our running events, we have a special on where if you purchased, um, if you register for both, you get $10 off. So each event is 25 for registration. So if you register for both, it's $40. And each event comes with a T-shirt for the first 100 to register. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we have some great prizes as well. Yeah, And it's, it's amazing the amount of support that you get for that because yes. there are so many people who run in the Cayman Islands these days, either, either because it is a passion of theirs mm-hmm. or some run for health uh, reasons, but so, so many runners out there. Yes. And believe it or not, we, this is an event we <clears throat> encourage because there, there are those that aren't avid runners, 
but walk, love to walk, love to speed walk. So they also enter the 10K for that reason. So mm-hmm. we'll have people walking the entire event. And so we, it, it's not just for, for those who run, but it's a run walk. So, and that's happening on the Sunday. And that starts at 6 a.m. And then we go to Spots Public Beach for the turtle release at 10 a.m. on the same Sunday. Again, that's sponsored by the Cayman Turtle Center. And we have, I think it's approximately 32 turtles to release this year. And it's also in conjunction with Cayman Airways because it's Cayman Airways' 50th anniversary. Happy anniversary, Cayman okay. Airways. Maybe we should release yeah. 50 turtles then. It was. It, it was 50. <laughs> uh, they've already released some of theirs. Okay, so, okay. so we're finishing those the, up yes. this year um, at the turtle release during Pirate Week. And we have the Children's Fun Day, which is one of, again, my favorite events at Pedro St. James. So once you're done with releasing your turtle, head straight up to Pedro and come and enjoy the the, the Kids Fun Day. We're going to have our pirates there, of course. We're going to have the Bunsen Castle, the first time ever water zone is going to be introduced there this year at the Kids Fun Day. Face painting, um, balloon um, animal making out of balloons, you name it, anything for kids, and it's all free. Um, some of the, and we're also having food um, sponsored by Popeyes and Burger King. Mm-hmm. And um, we have some vendors selling as well. So for the adults that might want to purchase food for themselves, um, we'll have vendors there selling. Uh, we'll also have snow cones. You name it, anything for kids is going to be there. And that's um, 12 p.m. until 4 p.m., and we're also having the underwater treasure hunt. That's one of the, the events that we've reintroduced this year, sponsored by Sunset House. And that's from 1 p.m. until 5 p.m. So quite a few of these events are, are running concurrent to each other. So there's something for everybody to do. For those who are avid divers that might not have kids, the underwater treasure hunt is for you. And um, there's quite a few prizes to be won for that event as well. And that leads us into a more adult-like event that's happening um, 12.01 on the Monday. That's called Soaked, Wet Fet. So for all those party animals, <laughs> you have something <laughs> you have something for you as well. And this is an endorsed Pirates Week event. So that's your Sunday activity. Now, the finale for the Grand Cayman Festival is on the Monday, public holiday Monday, mm-hmm. the 12th which is also Veterans Day. Right. So we, yes. we always highlight that as well. And we always welcome the veterans to have a booth there, you know, giving information, selling poppies mm-hmm. or water, mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. they wish. They're also on the parade, parade. route as on Saturday as well. So we have that volunteerism beach cleanup that I mentioned earlier, yes. and that's for the yes. tourists, and that's happening on Monday. And... We have our culture shop, which starts from 9 a.m. straight through to midnight. And culture shop involves so many different activities. Um, it is food, it's music, it's art. You know, everything combined to make culture and, and heritage of the Cayman Islands what it is. And uh, we have the Junior Snapper Cook-Off. That's hosted by the National Youth Culinary Program. So they will be out there doing the best snapper rundown, fried mm-hmm. snapper, whatever you want. And it's going to be a real snapper, not tilapia, yeah. right? No. <laughs> <laughs> not the tilapia cook-off, <laughs> snapper cook-off. <laughs> but yes, um, and that's something that I, I'm really looking forward to because I think the last time they had the snapper cook-off was the year before I started Pirate Suite, which would have been 2012. So it's long overdue now to come back. So really looking forward to that. And a big thank you to James Miles, a.k.a. Jamo, mm-hmm. for um, for hosting that event for us. And then we have our Culture Jam Local Talent Contest. Culture Jam was, re- was introduced last year, and it was not your typical song competition where, where it's only open for those who sing. But this this event allowed for more diversity. So if you act, if you dance, if you sing, if you're a comedian, if you're a mime, whatever your talent is, this event is for that. And there's a very attractive um, prize as well. And it's $2,000 for the winner. Uh 
So, and it's only, um, I think it's fifth, 25 for single entries, and for group entries, it's 75. And again, all of that information is, is on our website. We also have the sentencing of the pirates happening, and that's, for those who aren't aware, that's basically where we we sentence the pirates, we put them in jail for a year, and then they come back and take over again next year. So um, that happens on the on the Monday during Culture Shock. Okay, can I interrupt you yes, for a second? Yes, go right ahead. Hey, um, interrupt Se- me anytime. <laughs> so I'll talk all day. The, the, the Seattle Pirates, are they still involved in, in the Pirates Week um, festivities? I believe they, they still they come are, as often as they do? They haven't been here for a while, um, but I believe a group of them are coming back this year. Okay. Um, okay. I haven't heard... I haven't heard actual confirmation, but I, I believe there's about 10 to 12 of them that are coming. So I'll have more information on that probably sometime this week for yeah. sure. But we're hoping that they, they are able to make it. And the, the, the beach cleanup mm-hmm. for uh, that, that is focused more on the tourists tourists. Mm -hmm. Is that for one particular location on the island or are are we going to say, for instance, those persons who live in the uh, eastern district like Moritz Mm -hmm. or um, uh, a time sharing at Moritz, would you have some activity for them to do there as well or or is it going to be just Well, we've chosen chosen because the the time is limited. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. The beach cleanup, there's going to be a pickup location for the tourists to give them you know, instead of them trying to figure out how to get there or where to go, mm-hmm. we have a central point, um, and I believe it's the public beach. And the the beach of choice this year is the Barca's Beach, because okay. that okay. needs quite a bit of work, yes. I'm, I've yeah. been made to understand. And Plastic Free Cayman is heavily involved with both of these events, um, thanks to Claire Claire Hughes and, and her team for coming on board this year. But that's the, the beach of choice for the volunteerism um, event and it's also the beach of choice for the public event um, apparently Barker's needs quite a bit of help mm-hmm. so maybe we'll have something in the eastern districts um, next year but throughout the year there's there's um, cleanups all throughout the island so um, I think just this year alone we're, we're focusing on the Barker's beach area um, so back to the schedule for Monday, we have the Illumination Night Parade. Um, that's that's an exciting event for those who aren't able to make it for the day parade. They can come out at night. We're going to have quite a few interesting features this year with fire and LED lights. Mm, mm. I'm not going to say what it is. <laughs> you have to come out to see <laughs> you it. You have to come out to see it. Yes. And we're going to utilize that little rock formation on, in Hogstye Bay. We're going to utilize that in ways that has never been utilized. Mm -hmm. So, again, come out and see it. And for those of you who are from the old school, Mm -hmm. we used to call it the key. That's the key. The key. Yes, the key. You know, that's my bucket list to to, to swim in Hogstye Bay. I've never swam in Hogstye Bay. And I almost did it this weekend because we had a rehearsal Uh for uh for the landing. But... Time got away from me, but th- I will be swimming in that. Well, part. That, that's almost yeah. a, that's almost a, that should be a rite of passage I, for yes. every Cayman Caymanian. I and agree. the biggest, the big, it was a huge accomplishment for a youngster to be able to swim from the shore, from the sand to the, to key. the key. Oh, nice! And then you go and you rest on the key if you if you. Fortunate enough, fortunate enough to, to be able to get on there because you had to see eggs on there, oh, so you have wow. to be very careful mm-hmm. getting up on there. You mm-hmm. get up there and you rest, and then you swim, swim back to the shore, swim nice. back to the shore again. Nice. So that's quite an experience. Well, I'm not trying to get to the key. I just <laughs> want to swim in Hawks Bay. <laughs> but um, but for the cardboard boat regatta, that's the key. Is is the um, the point of return so uh-huh. to speak so you go around the key and then you come back so um that key is a very very special place for for pirates week um so again the night parade is happening there come out and watch that and then the closing fireworks also happens on the monday at 8 p.m and then we lead into our street dance finale and we're going to have local artists as well as international artists on the monday as well mm-hmm. so every major night of the festival, Friday, Saturday, and Monday. There will be local acts and international acts. Okay, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, the conversation with Miss Melanie McField, Executive Director of the Pirates Week Office, Pirates Week Festivities. 
the conversation will continue with her, so please stay tuned. A pharmacy is where you go for medicine and for the pharmacist's advice on how to take them. Here at CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, our pharmacists are trusted health professionals whose job is to help people receive the best results out of their medicine. They know exactly what's in your prescriptions and will be happy to answer any of your questions. You can be sure that our pharmacists will see that your medicine is at the right strength, in the right dose, and will check that you yourself know how to take them or use them properly. Come in today for a consultation with our pharmacist at CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, where we care about your health. A trip to New York City is the experience of a lifetime. Starting this December, Cayman Airways will be offering daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City. That's right. Cayman Airways is going daily to New York City starting this December. Stroll through Central Park or take in the bright lights of Times Square. Enjoy a Broadway show or visit museums, the Empire State Building, and so much more. Whether you're visiting for business or pleasure, you'll fall in love with New York City. And daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman aboard Cayman Airways starting this December. For details and to book, call Cayman Airways Reservations at 949-2311. Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com. You remember the sale at Vamp Motors? Yeah, the your sale, your choice. The one where you can get cash back or can put the savings to extend the warranty or upgrade features. Yes, it's still going on. But now you can get $8,000 off a new Ford Ranger truck. $8,000, you know? You for real? Come see for yourself while they still have so much to choose from from now through October. Save big during your sale, your choice at Vamp Motors. With almost every vehicle on sale, you decide whether to get your dream ride at its lowest price. Take cash back at Add years to the warranty or service plan. Choose an add-on or mix your options. Your sale, your choice. Because you know what you need and Vamped Motors will help you drive it home. Vamped Motors on Walker's Road. Cayman's cruise industry must be preserved and developed. It is a myth that the cruise lines will continue to call on Cayman at the rate they do now without the piers. It is a fact that the mega-class ships will not be tendered. Arrivals will decline by half over time as the older ships are decommissioned. This will hurt our economy and thousands of Caymanians who work in this industry. If we want to continue providing opportunities for Caymanians, we need the piers. Support the piers. Support our tourism. Initiating system. For information that matter. For the record. With Orit Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. In the studio with me, Ms. Melanie McField, Executive Director of the Pirates Week uh, office. Uh, we're talking about Pirates Week 2018. At some point in time during the discussion as well, I'm going to ask Ms. Melanie to compare and contrast, uh, look at what was done in 2017, what we're doing in 2018, because if you were listening earlier, uh, Pirates Week celebrations, in order for it to continue to be successful, it has to evolve. It has to take into consideration so many factors, uh, because at the end of the day, it's a celebration, but it is also um, a business venture as well. So mm -hmm. to keep people interested, to be able to make money off the festivities, uh, you have to be innovative at times yes. as well. Ms. McVeigh. And festival tourism is extremely important, not only to grant to the Cayman Islands, but to the Caribbean overall. But what differentiates the Cayman Islands from the rest of the Caribbean, Pirates Week is one of a kind. Mm -hmm. There's no other event of its kind throughout the Caribbean which is a lot, a lot of people don't realize that. So it's very unique, a very unique festival. This year we've teamed up with um, a company called Everfest, and it's probably the biggest um, festival membership that you could sign up for. And it, it reaches over 5 million festival goers. Yes, and it's a big opportunity for Pirates Week to be hosted on this website. The owner is actually um, co-owner of Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the reach is amazing. And we're doing a giveaway promotion on that website for, I think it's like 25, um, 25 tickets for the downtown event that's happening. Not not just a downtown event, but, but anything that requires a ticket admission. Okay. And part of that package includes two round trip tickets on Cayman Airways, and a three-night hotel stay. I believe it's at the Margaritaville Resort. I'm not quite sure. Um, 
but I think that's the hotel of choice. So that is a big initiative for the festival to be a part of of being on this Everfest site. And uh, I just want to say, Pirates Week, as you mentioned earlier, the evolving of any event, any festival, is extremely important to the survival of that event. And those who have attended Pirates Week in the past, as you mentioned, the comparison to 2017 and 18, last year it was a free event for the Mm -hmm. Friday night. Mm -hmm. This year it's a paid event. But it's not an astronomical amount of money either. You know, it, it there's no other event in the world that you could go to and not pay an admission to mm-hmm. see the lineup of entertainers that, offered, that yeah. will be on stage for that price. And what's and, that price uh, again? Uh, um, I think it starts off at $20, mm-hmm. 30 40 and then there's VIP um, tickets that include, um, all, I, I believe, all you can drink and eat. Um, the best... Um, site to go to, to to get that information is is Event Pro or Monster Media. Okay. Um, we endorse the event, but we're not mm. as involved with it as we would have been last year, for for example. Um, as I mentioned, it is part of the request for proposal that was approved earlier this year. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I think they're doing an awesome job of putting that event together, and I would encourage everyone to go out and support the waterfront invasion as they would have normally, whether it's free or, or a paid entry. Um, there's the food courts that are still accessible to the public. And there's also, I believe, a DJ closer to the South Terminal area that's also free to the public as well. So there's there's something for everybody mm-hmm. to do. Saturday is, again, open to the public, free of charge, and, mm-hmm. as, and so is Monday. And the, the food yeah. court... Uh, that's where you know vendors can purchase a, a stall or set up a stall yes, uh, yes. to sell their um, yes. Their, their our food. expiration date for or our closing date actually is the twenty sixth of this month. Is that this week? I think that's this. Yes, that's yeah. this week. Yes, can't yes. keep up with the time. <laughs> <laughs> Four so, days from today. Yeah, <laughs> we don't have a lot of spaces left, but mm-hmm. we do have a few. Um, the food court goes very quickly. We start selling. We start selling stalls from as early as July. So, but we have people coming to us as early as March mm-hmm, asking mm-hmm. to purchase wow. a stall. Wow. Wow. So you know they know the value in, in mm-hmm. having mm-hmm. a stall at Pirates Week, and they're they're reasonably reasonably priced. We support nonprofits by giving them a discount as well, and we also have nonprofit carts that we have along the parade route on the Saturday that are only $50, but there are only a few of those, you know, so that they're not competing with each other too much. And um, that's all sponsored by CEL, Pepsi, and Aquafina. So, again, a big thank you to them, as well as the teen-up event. We have something for the teens, too. You know, okay. people always say, you know, kids shouldn't be at certain events. Yes. However, there's a designated area, f- designated area for your child, um, ages... 12 to 16 Mm -hmm. and we're very strict about that age group 12 to 16 and we have the national drug council who has partnered partnered with us for that event and we have several adults that shop around the 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 kids that attend and also kids because it takes a kid to know who's coming in Mm -hmm. you know you and i might not know these the ages of these these kids so (laughs) and if we have a student with us that's familiar they can easily say no she's under 12 or he's over 16 and that's what we need we need that assistance so ndc helps out tremendously with that that event so uh, again a big thank you to them um so 2017 we didn't have quite a few events that we're having this year we were able to print our schedule on letter size paper. This year we had to go to legal. <laughs> <laughs> so we have quite a few events happening this year. And uh, we mentioned a few of those with the reintroduction of the snapper cook-off, the song competition, the turtle release, and um, the treasure underwater treasure hunt. So those are four new events that, that have come on board this year that we didn't have last year. And we also have Culture Shop as well. We had the combined district day last year, but we're having culture shop this year, and the districts are having their independent district days. And they will be given an opportunity to speak more 
on the district days and what's to be expected. I don't want to take, you know, their their steal little thunder, yeah, right? steal their thunder. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll definitely have that opportunity, mm-hmm. and and I know you know people are looking forward to attending those individual days again and seeing their floats on the road. Um, it's it's quite a bit of an undertaking for the committees, and you know they have been very very hard working committees throughout the year to support the the festival including their building of the floats and sometimes it's it takes i would say th- between 3 and 5 people to do this work and it should really be more people involved mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it's it's they need the support of their their local communities and i highly encourage people to get more involved you know bring back that that friendly rivalry where you know east end and north side would be trying to see what the other is doing you know with some tarpaulin up so they can't <laughs> see what's going on you know bring that back yes but uh, one of the biggest misconceptions of the float parade is that it's the the floats are submitted by the festival they're not submitted by the festival they're submitted by the community so when you come and see that parade it's not pirate sweets floats it is your yeah. community floats so when you don't see what you want to see you 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 need to challenge your yourself mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. get more involved no, and no. and say well I didn't submit a float maybe I can do that next year or I can help someone do that so it's it's all a community effort mm-hmm. and then you would have co- uh, corporate uh, corporate floats as yes, well yes we have uh, corporate floats we have non-profit, non-profit floats non-profit floats yeah. we want mm-hmm. the schools to get more involved um, you know and and it's not just about physically building a float it's about you can have a walking group as well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the lions um, always yes, enter with yes, their walking group yes. and they give a message of, of um, I'm not sure what their message is this year I think it's um, diabetes if I'm not mistaken um, but those are great ways to not just promote your 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 community, but you know, advertise your business. You know, it's the biggest audience at any one given location That's on right. island. That's right. Yes. You know, yeah. for the entire year, mm-hmm. for you to really market yourself and and your your establishment. So take advantage of it. Okay. And very, very quickly, um, mm-hmm. we have, have about two minutes before we go to our um, headline news at 9 o'clock, which is very short. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, overall safety and the assistance that you get, like, for instance, from the special constabulary. Yes. Uh, because uh, to my knowledge, uh, all of the time that I have heard about Pirates Week and participated in it, I've never heard of any major event taking place in terms of uh, Can you you know, some negative wood and knock on wood for that <laughs> as well. Yeah. But that uh, a, a lot of, uh, that success has to do, you know, with the involvement of the police, the involvement yes. of volunteers, yes. and people taking individual responsibility to yes. ensure that their behavior is, you know, up to par. And and I'm glad you brought that up because that is so underrated, in my opinion. Um, and the the importance cannot be emphasized enough. The RCIPS, a, they're a phenomenal team of officers who come on board every year to support the festival. The road closures, I know it's a sore point for many people. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just warning you from uh, now. Yeah, you know, you know it's Pirates Week. It's Pirates yes, Week. Yes. You know, so we, we do our best to get the word out there. And the police also puts it in their their um, news report as mm-hmm, well. Mm-hmm. So the road closures and just giving people more than a advance notice of alternate routes to take. Um, the parade in and of itself, we have the we always have the HSC on standby. Um, there's oh. routes established in the event that something does happen would be the, the best access for them. So we do have a safety plan in place. We meet with the the police. Um, we have regular meetings with the police. Uh, Mr. Harlan Powery is our mm-hmm. point of contact, and okay. he's he's been so helpful. Um, we have the fire department as well, who are also part of the parade. But we keep all of the the um, emergency services, age, yeah, mm-hmm. emergency services up to date, and oh. and in the loop with what's happening and where to go if something happens. And we're we're very thankful that 
all is well and we'll stay that way. Okay, we're going to headline news at the top of the hour at 9 o'clock. Very short uh, news uh, clip there. When we return, the conversation will continue with Ms. Melanie McField, Executive Director of the Pirates Week festivities. Please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. Follow Radio K-Man on Twitter. Radio K-Man on Twitter. All the latest information, breaking news, community events, and more. Follow us at twitter.com slash Radio K-Man. Radio K-Man. Radio K-Man's newsroom. These are the biggest stories right now. A new governor has been appointed in succession to Mr. Anwar Chowdhury. Officials at the governor's office announced Friday Martin Keith Roper will take up his appointment this month, but it is not clear whether the appointment is temporary or permanent. According to a statement from Government Information Service, he is a highly experienced career diplomat with a successful track record in senior corporate leadership roles across the world. He was born in Halifax, West Yorkshire in June 1965. Prior to his appointment as governor of the Cayman Islands, Martin was minister and deputy head of mission in Beijing, where he was responsible for a network of over 800 people across five diplomatic posts. In international news, Hurricane Willa has grown rapidly into an extremely dangerous near Category 5 storm in the eastern Pacific on a path to smash into Mexico's western coast by Wednesday. Coastal region schools are expected to close today and begin preparing emergency shelters ahead of the onslaught. The U.S. National Hurricane Center said that Willa could produce life-threatening storm surge, wind and rainfall over portions of southwestern and west-central Mexico beginning tomorrow. It predicted that Willa could become a Category 5 hurricane later today, generating life-threatening surf and riptide conditions. U.S. President Donald Trump says the U.S. will begin cutting off or substantially reducing aid to three Central American nations over a migrant caravan heading to the U.S. southern border. Trump tweets Guatemala, Honduras and El Salvador were not able to do the job of stopping people from leaving their country and coming illegally to the U.S. The three countries received a combined more than $500 million in funding from the U.S. in fiscal year 2017. Those are your latest updates. Those are your latest updates here on Radio Cayman. I'm Shanda Gallego. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. You can find us. www.radiocayman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. Initiating system for information that matter. For the record with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. It is my pleasure to have in the studio with me Ms. Melanie McField, the Executive Director of the Pirates Week festivities, Pirates Week office. And we're talking about Pirates Week 2018. And again, for your benefit, Pirates Week will be celebrated in Cayman Brack from the 2nd to the 4th of November. Grand Cayman from the 8th to the 12th of November, uh, Little Cayman the 16th to the 18th of November. And for those of you in Grand Cayman, the uh, district day schedule, uh, East End, Friday the 2nd of November, Miss mm-hmm. Melanie, okay. West Bay, Monday the 5th of November, North Side, Tuesday the 6th of November, Bodentown, Wednesday, the 7th of November, and Georgetown, Thursday, the 8th of November as well. I uh, we want to talk a little bit uh, about that. I know you have some questions that people have sent in to you as well, so I want to give you an opportunity to fill in all of the gaps, Ms. Melanie. So we, I, I have quite a few interests, and I'm getting a few WhatsApps about the song competition, okay, okay. which seems to be the hot point. Um, I'll just read a few of the competition rules and requirements. Mm-hmm. The in, whether, whether it's an individual or a group, the registration fee is $50. However, if you're submitting more than one song, it's 50 per song. Okay. And we've actually relaxed that rule a bit because initially it was just one performer, one song. But we do realize, you know, there are quite a few musicians out there that want to 
want their music to be heard. Mm-hmm. So they'd like to get more than one song up uh-huh. there. So if you have more than one song, go right ahead and submit it. The The competition is open to performers that are Caymanian and Caymanian residents only. However, songwriters need not be Caymanian or residents, but cannot perform on stage. Okay. Performers can sing, as I mentioned, can sing more than one song, and songwriters can submit more than one song as well. So you might be a songwriter, but no interest in being a performer. So you can write for me, and I'll go up and sing it. And you may have three songs, and I can go up and sing all three songs. But each of those submissions are a $50 application Uh fee. Uh And if you're the writer and you want your recognition, then you make sure that the person who's singing the song at least give you the recognition that this was written by so-and-so. Exactly. (laughs) And that's a given, and I I hope that's that's done. Um, The lyrics and melody must be original. No profanity. Songs Mm. must be debuted at the National Song Competition and never released or performed anywhere prior. Uh, I mentioned earlier the the genre is mu- it must be regional genre reggae mm-hmm. soca calypso or Latin example reggaeton merengue salsa. Um, if there is an overwhelming amount of entries, meaning more than ten to be judged, participants move to the final round of competition, and that will be the the tenth of November. And that was initially that rule was initially put in with the anticipation of us getting a lot of entries, mm-hmm. so we would have to do a preliminary yes. round. But the finals is the only round round we'll need to do. As I mentioned before, the cash prizes are five thousand for first, three thousand for second, third is two thousand, and the five thousand is sponsored by the Ministry of Culture, and the second prize is sponsored sponsored by the Tourism Attraction Board, and the third is sponsored by the. Cayman Music and Entertainment Association. So it's well, well worth the effort. Well you know? worth the effort. <laughs> well worth the effort. So put in that, you know, burn that. that Midnight oil? Know? There you go. Midnight <laughs> oil. <laughs> and get Midnight. it in. Because if you win, it'll be more than worth. 5000 is a lot of money. It, it, it is. You it know, is, I could yeah. do it 5000 I wish I could enter. <laughs> <laughs> the judge's decisions are final. The deadline for submission is the 30th of October. And I want to say that is next week, Tuesday. Yeah, eight days from eight days. Next yep. week, Tuesday, yes. So mm-hmm. um, submission should include the the performer's picture, a headshot in high, high resolution, your lyric sheet, the music in MP3 or WAV format only, performances, uh, performance based bio, 50 words maximum. Mm-hmm. And just to go through what the judges are looking for, because okay. that's important. Yes. The judging criteria and the points allocation for lyrics, that's broken into three different categories, subcategories. There's the theme and relevance, which is worth 10 points, structure, and that involves the verse, the bridge, the chorus. That's worth five points. Originality is 10. And then the other major category is melody, and there's two subcategories for that. Compatibility, which is five points. Melodic line, which is another five points. And then your next major category is presentation. You know, come come original. Mm-hmm, dress, mm-hmm. dress like a pirate. Yep. You know, incorporate the theme. Costume, dress, and appearance is $5. Stage present and rapport is also 5 Not $5, four <laughs> points, sorry. <laughs> You're still thinking about that $5,000. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> five points for costume, dress, and appearance, and stage presence, and rapport is also five points. And audience favorite. I was going to say yes. that. Do we have a people's Absolutely. choice? Absolutely. <laughs> we have a people's choice, and we're going to have a, what's it called, a decibel reader mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that can read your, your, your applaud so that there's no ambiguity of who actually won that mm-hmm. five mm-hmm. points because mm-hmm. that, that audience favorite is worth five points. So the louder you scream, the higher it goes and that person will will be awarded those five points for that so it might even be a tiebreaker you know <laughs> so those those are the judging criteria and the points for the competition for those that have have reached out and wanted more information and again this can all be found on our website or just come into our office we love seeing people come in and mm-hmm. chat with us so yeah. 
And earlier you, you spoke about Mr. Cardinal de Costa. Uh, yes. I'm going to ask you to go back to that topic, yes. to, so, to him again. So we will have Mr. DeCosta on at some point, um, having a conversation with him about the historical perspective mm-hmm. of the competition. Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. DeCosta was actually tremendously involved in the the founding of um, Pirates Week. Mm-hmm. He was one of the founders with Mr. Jim, Jim Barton. Barton. Mm-hmm. So he's very much involved, was very much involved with the song competition and how that became what it is or what it was. And we're now trying to bring that back. Mm-hmm. So we would love to hear his viewpoints. And he has all that information. I would not even dare <laughs> try to walk in those <laughs> shoes. <laughs> but I look forward to having him as a guest. Yes. 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 Do we have um, any any things specifically targeted to our cruise uh, passengers on, on on the especially the district days? Um, well, the I'm not sure what the, t- the 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 capacity is on those days, but ideally, it would be nice to have um, a tour agency get more involved mm-hmm. with getting tourists to those specific districts I know Mr. Banks had reached out to us you know wanting something like that and Mm -hmm. and I will say that you know it time has just gotten away from us but that is something that we would definitely want the district committees to meet with him about it's it's there's still time and um and see what can be arranged and that's uh Dirk Banks uh who's uh, the head of the the transportation board yes Mm -hmm. And um, he's been very, very vocal about the District Days and, and Pirates Week and as a whole and, and how much he supports it. So I'm glad you brought that up because that's on my things to do list this week of, of getting in touch with him and trying to establish some form of, of regular transportation to the districts, even if it's getting two or three buses up there, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. tourists to have an hour of, of experiencing you know, culture throughout the islands. And this is a good opportunity for those um, tour operators and taxi drivers who complain that the the uh, cruise lines are getting their lion's share of whatever fees are charged. This is an opportunity for something to be land-based as yes. opposed to ha- for it to ha- having to be booked through the cruise yes. ship themselves. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's an excellent opportunity. It is. Yeah. And there are a lot of tourists that... that just freelance around the island that are not committed to any specific tour company. And those are, are the tourists that you want to target. So um, I would definitely have that conversation with Mr. Banks and the district committees and see what can be worked out for this year. Okay, we have one phone call. Let's go to the f- phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, Uthi uh, and Melanie. Uh, good morning. I, I'd, I'd like to, to, to say, Melanie, that I, I believe that... Um, that you, uh, from what I'm, what I hear from the circles of the various committees, that you do an excellent job in, in, in trying to keep this, this thing together. Mm-hmm. But uh, what, what is uh, alarming, and this is no, no fault of yours, mm-hmm. um, is, is that I, I constantly hear of the lack of financial support from the government for, for the district, uh, the district committees, and I, I, I think that somewhere along the line. Uh, Someone has uh, has not re- realized and recognized, and, and this is obviously within government. Uh, the reason that Pirate Week was even uh, brought about, it was brought about because this time of the year, uh, uh, particularly in October, September, and October was was the was a very was a downturn in, in tourism, mm-hmm. uh, and so the, 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 it was brought about to our fest, the festival time to encourage uh, persons to visit for that for those festivities. Mm-hmm. And uh, with the amount of money that I'm that I'm hearing that is being given to the district days, it surely will compromise the the the, the integrity and the and the, um, and, and the quality of what you get from these festivities. Even though you uh, uh, continue to try to keep it at, at a standard, well, you don't control the government first. Uh, so obviously, um, it, it is it is just a situation where I think that the government has to recognize. Uh, the importance of this fest- this, this uh, festivity, and 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 put out the money accordingly, because uh, if we we are subsidizing Cayman areas in multiple multiple million dollars every every year, uh, and so 
this would be a, a time for for to try to get the flight full coming in that we could help realize uh, some of that money back. I mean, like the old lady said when she peed in the sea, it a little bit helps. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I, I, I'll leave with that, but Melody, keep the good work stuff. Uh, Thank you so much. Good things about you. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, caller. We have another caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, O.C., and good morning, Miss Melanie. Good, good morning, morning, ma'am. Um, I always hear good news about Miss Melanie, um, and I can leave O.C. out too, but we're, you know, we're talking about the Parrot Suite sure, sure. Festival. Radio Cayman is always top in my books. Mm-hmm. But... Um, I was I was thinking that, uh, or I'm, I'm going to ask Miss Melanie, do you all put out like the schedules of what is happening in the hotels and in the in the condos? Yes, ma'am, we do. We do. So we we have a a list of island wide um, distribution. Yes, ma'am. That we we do supermarkets. We do condos. We do um, major hotels. Um, we do all of Georgetown. The Pirates actually put out the, the posters last week throughout the the island. The actual schedule itself, the printing of that is happening this week. Mm-hmm. But we have it on our website for all to see. But the physical printing of this schedule is happening this week. So you're, you're oh. calling right on time. Okay, good. Because, you know, um, that that would be something that... The, the tourists would be asking about yes, you know, ma'am. What, what we do, what are we doing, and the district days and, and whatnot. Exactly. Another thing I was thinking about, I had seen it in some place that we, we went some years ago. Um, the, during the day, during the uh, school days, Mm-hmm. Mostly it was the younger children. They would always go. I know where I've seen it. I've seen it in Hawaii. They go. They they would always go to like um, uh, shopping malls, supermarket, and things like that. But since we don't have a whole lot of shopping malls, mm-hmm. I was thinking um, maybe we could do something like that it's too late for this year but I could think about it for next year mm-hmm. is that that the younger children go and sing for um, the times of when the tourist is in town mm-hmm. and things like that it's such such a delight to see young children participating all in their uniforms, those those um, children that are um, bus to school and stuff well, like that, they I would th- sing like three and four songs mm-hmm. and things like that. Well, I think you <laughs> might actually be in for a treat because the district days invite the schools out. And I know quite a few of those schools participate, and they and they sing either the national anthem or or a folklore song that's traditionally Caymanian. There's also quadrille dancers that also attend the district days, but during mm-hmm. the culture shop event, which is oh. something new to the festival this year, which is happening on the public holiday Monday, we're going to have quadrille dancers there as well, and we're going to have even the the folk, the national folk. Am I saying it's right? The folk singers. Okay. Our very own folk singers will be there. Okay. So, and we're going to have the snapper cook off, which is is a big event with yeah, with only I, children. I was listening to that. Yes. Said, wow. Okay. So, and <laughs> and we're going to have six thousand cruise ship passengers in that day. So we have three cruise ship Ooh. passengers in that day. So your your wish is actually coming through this year, ma'am. So it would be okay. nice to have you downtown. On that Monday, or even at the district days, if you can make it, we're going to have seating uh-huh. and um, over a huge 40 by 40 tent. So you'll have a place to sit and enjoy all of what's happening while you're enjoying your good stew turtle or your your, <laughs> your, your, your kunk or whatever, yep, your yep. cornbread, whatever makes you happy. Yeah, Cayman-style you know, beef. Cayman-style beef, <laughs> all while watching the kids do their, their, their <laughs> quadrille dances, singing, no, and everything just, that's Caymanian. I just... 
finish eating some breakfast. I don't want to get hungry again. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I'm hungry. Bring me some. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're and, welcome. And, Thank and you. And like the, the last caller say, you keep up the good work. Thank, and thank you so, so you much. May God give you health and strength to do so. And thank you again to OC and to Radio Cayman. And thank you. Good, good morning. To, I think it was Paul, Paul, Paul. Paul is in, in, in here yeah. with us this yeah. morning. Good yes. morning to him. Okay, okay thank, thank, thank you very much, Colin. So much. Very, thank you very day. much. Morning. We passed our commercial break, so we're going to take that break now. And when we return, we will have the last 10 minutes with Miss Mellon and Matt Field. So please stay tuned. Time is the experience of a lifetime. Starting this December, Cayman Airways will be offering daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City. That's right. Cayman Airways is going daily to New York City starting this December. Stroll through Central Park or take in the bright lights of Times Square, enjoy a Broadway show, or visit museums, the Empire State Building, and so much more. Whether you're visiting for business or pleasure, you'll fall in love with New York City. And daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman aboard Cayman Airways starting this December. For details and to book, call Cayman Airways Reservation at 949 Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. Can you explain what a less than container load is for shipment and what your minimum charge is? Sure. A less than container load or LCL is any overseas shipment that does not require the full space of a container. At Seaboard, we have great rates for small packages. Just let us know the dimensions of your package and we'll help you out from there. Shipping shore to shore, Not all insurance is created equal, but who has the time to shop around? Take the guesswork out of your insurance coverage with Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Let us match you with the best coverage to suit your needs at a price to suit your wallet. Plus, get superior customer service from dedicated claims professionals to ensure speedy claims processing. Get your insurance through Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Call us today at 949-7822 for a free quote. Fidelity, we're good for you. Cayman Kind is the Cayman experience. We work at the Cayman Craft Market. It is a myth that we do not need the cruise ship industry. It is a fact that when there are no ships in port, we do not earn a living. We depend on the cruise industry, and if it was to reduce by half, many others just like us would suffer immensely. We want to work and provide for our families. We need the pier. Support, Support the, the piers. Support our tourism. Initiating system for information that matter for the record with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio K Man. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me this morning, the executive director of the Pirates Week office, Miss Melanie Macfield. We're talking about Pirates Week 2018, and we're almost to the end of our show, so I'm going to throw the mic back over to her so that she can cover all of those areas that we haven't covered yet, and also uh, to um, have some closing comments as well, Miss Macfield. Just to add to what the last caller mm-hmm. mentioned about the distribution of the schedule, yes. I did mean to tell her that we will have the souvenir program, and we print 5,000 of those. We will have those at the airport, the the Department of Tourism desk at the airport, mm-hmm. as well as at the dock, mm-hmm. and then we distribute them. We have a wide distribution list, and that schedule, the schedule of events for all three islands is also in that souvenir program. Okay. So I just wanted to to get that point out to her, and, and thanks to both callers that called in earlier. Another thing I want to mention, volunteers. The A big part of what makes up the festival and, and the success of the festival is our volunteers. Mm-hmm. And we cannot stress enough how grateful we are to have them and, and how much they mean to, to Pirates Week. But there's always room for people to volunteer, and not just for the festival, but for the district days as well. Okay. You know, as, as I was mentioning um, to you earlier, these committees really do a lot and it's it's only a handful of them that do the mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. majority of the work, and we highly encourage people to support their their committees and and get more involved with building the float, you know, helping with the costume that's going to be entered for the um, district heritage ambassador costume competition and your district day as well. Mm-hmm. So volunteers, volunteer, get out there and come into our office. You can submit your your application via our website. Email us, call us, just come to the office. 
you know, we're, we're always open and available to take your name and your information, mm -hmm. and you just tell us where you want to be, right. and we'll put you there. Excellent. Um, we're also still taking sponsorship and donors. We will never turn away, <laughs> whether it's in kind or cash. Yes. We won't turn that away, absolutely not. Um, the festival is, the actual festival itself is fully um, dependent on sponsorship mm -hmm. and donations. And um, it's not it's not fully funded by the government, as a lot of people think right. it is. We do get quite a bit of, of support from the government, but we do get support from the private sector as well. So that, it's important to, to remember that. Um, just to give you a rundown again of what's happening, um, again, the dates for the BRAC, the 2nd to the 4th, the district days are the 2nd to the 8th, the Grand Cayman activities are the 8th to the 12th, and Little Cayman, the 16th to the 18th. For all of your information, you can go to our website at piratesweekfestival.com. We also have a bit of information on our social media pages, mm -hmm. and our Facebook page is Cayman Islands Pirates Week Festival, and we also have Instagram, which is Pirates Week Cayman. So follow us, like us, and um, get all of your updates on what's happening at the festival. Okay, sounds sounds good. Um, and uh, what would you say to those persons who are actually planning on taking part in the event mm -hmm. or just coming to view, uh, to be spectators as well? So those, well, we have our participants who are, are well-versed in what is expected of, of the festival, um, whether it's an entertainer or, or our very own pirates and I just want to say a big shout out to our Cayman Islands Pirates, um, the two captains, Mr. Darwin Ebikes yep. and Orneal Galbraith. Um, the two of them are amazing, amazing um, human beings, and they do a wonderful job of getting their crews ready for Pirates Week. We have our international pirates as well, who we have, I believe, Las Tortugas is bringing in over 25 pirates just, just for that crew alone which is a big deal for Pirates Week, and mm -hmm. they all take part in mm -hmm. the festivities. So um, if, you're a, if you are a spectator, there's so much to do, so much to see. Um, pay very close attention to our schedule of events. It tells you when, where, and the road closures will tell you how to get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So listen to your... Um, we're going to have the road closures up on our social media pages as well as our website as well. And um, and culture shop is something that you cannot miss. It's a public holiday, so there's yes, no excuse. Yes. And it's it's the the day that we really showcase all in one location all of what Cayman has to offer. So you're going to have vendors from all over the the island, from Georgetown, East End, and everywhere in between. Um, we're going to have the night parade on that that day as well. And that is something to really come out and enjoy with your kids. The finale of the fireworks are happening. We're going to have underwater fireworks. And Mr. Graham Rankin <laughs> is going to do his thing. Lord Graham. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So he, he wants to blow up a few things, but I told him no blowing up this year. Let's just <laughs> ease off of the explosions yeah, yeah, a bit. Yes. But um, <laughs> but it's 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 there's a lot happening, okay. and I highly encourage people to come out and support. Yeah. And we have... Yeah. Mm -hmm. We Go don't ahead. have any uh, Craig Merrin stunts this year. You know, remember once that uh, with the bicycle and, you know, riding off the bicycle into the ocean? Oh, Craig no. I, I, that, I must, <laughs> that must have been way before my yeah, time. <laughs> that, was, that was so good, several years ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that bicycle so, still Craig. in the bottom of Hog, Hogside Bay? <laughs> I think you dove it up afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but Craig, I, I love Craig. Oh, he's yes, he's yes. Quite, a, quite a character. Yep. And he's always encouraging of, of um, Pirates Week as well and submitting mm -hmm. the, the pictures from the past. Yes, Love yes, it. Yes. Um, we have some incredible sponsors that have been and continue to be such support of the festival. And I mentioned quite a few of them earlier. Um, I just want to highlight our major sponsors, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. including the Ministry of Tourism, Kim and Aries, um, and the Department of Tourism as well. Radio Cayman, of course. And we have um, Monster Media that's come on board this year for the the waterfront sound yes. invasion. Uh -huh. um, there's so many to mention. And 
I would hate to get into mentioning one and forget, forget the other. Forget, yes, yes. <laughs> so I just wanted to risk. highlight. Oh, yes, there is. But I have mentioned them throughout the, the schedule of events um, and what's happening. Um, Lobster Pot is a big support supporter as well of the fireworks. And just a big thank you to Marcus Cumber, who is always there for us. And and all of all, all of the other tourists, tourists the other sponsors, sponsors. that are on board mm-hmm. and and those that support the festival. Yeah. And for those uh, people who like the culinary aspect of it, mm-hmm. um, let's talk about uh, food safety. Uh, yes. People need not uh, worry because everything yes. is under control. So part of the requirements for the vendors is to have their food handlers certificate. And the Department of Environmental Health puts on a workshop um, specifically for Pirate Street vendors. And I believe one is happening on the 24th. That is what, day after tomorrow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Wednesday. there's still time. There's still time for you to do to get that certificate. It's a six-hour workshop, and I believe it's only $15. And that certificate is good for, I want to say, two or three years. Okay. okay. So it's well worth the, the time. And um, we're going to have our very own tent at the food court this year, our very own Pirate Suite designated tent, giving you as much information as we can on the importance of using the bagasse products, which is the the biodegradable mm-hmm, products, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, they're going to be sold at the Pirates Week office. So all vendors can come and purchase their products there. The price is very reasonable in comparison to the styrofoam mm-hmm, pricing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Styrofoam never degrades. So yeah, always yeah. remember the extra two or three cents that you may spend on a container is more than worth it to the environment. These products degrade within three to six months because they're made out of sugar cane. Mm-hmm. Um, end okay, product. Okay. So it's all natural. And um, we'll have a, a, a DJ in the food court giving some, some entertainment wow, as well. Wow. So that's a first. <laughs> and um, so you'll have your very own party. You know, you can eat and dance at the same time. <laughs> um, and that's happening on the Friday and the Saturday. And then, of course, on the Monday, it's all along Cardinal Avenue and Harbor Drive with our vendors, um, our demonstrations, and all the same rules apply for Monday as well with the food hand vendors having their food handler certificate. Um, the DAH will be there checking out um, vendors mm-hmm. and making sure mm-hmm. that they're, you know, they're following, following the, the rules and the regulations mm-hmm. of what the food court expects you mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. Any, 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 any final reminders? Any, I, I know that, you know, <laughs> you're starting now to do your road show in, ter- yes. in, in terms of uh, promoting the event. So people will hear mm-hmm. more and see more of you, you know, as the days go on and, yep. the, uh, and the weeks go on as well. And social media is a big part of how we promote this day and age. So we, we've started, we kicked off our promotions from this the 19th of September with Talk Like a Pirate's Day. Ah. So that's the official kickoff of the festival <laughs> in terms of our promotion. So um, as far as radio and interviews are concerned, now d- you're actually the first, oh, first show. I'm honored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and none other than Radio Cayman, of course, you know, so um, you will get sick of my voice very mm-hmm. soon and in the coming weeks. But um it's all part of what's expected, and I I pray all goes well this year. And the weather is how it should be, yes. and um, and we have a good time and just enjoy ourselves and and be a part of Pirate Week like we should. Okay, well, thank you very much, and uh, you know all the best to you. And we've heard uh, comments from uh, a couple of our callers in terms of uh, the your performance as mm-hmm. the director. Uh, executive director of the Pirates Week festivities, you know, as well. And uh, based on that uh, history that you have and that track record that you have, uh, then we know what to expect uh, this you. time around as well. Folks, I want to thank you for allowing Radio Cayman and by extension for the record into your homes, into your vehicles, as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands into your places of work. Uh, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. I also wanted to remind you that we are our brothers and our sisters keepers. There is always someone out there who's less fortunate than we are, and I ask you to extend a helping hand to them. If you can't do that, then I suggest you donate to avoid the charity because we always want to consider those who need, not necessarily those who want or even those who crave. I say to you, have a great day. 
continue to support your radio station, Radio Cayman. And before I say, and we ask the good Lord to bless these three beautiful, wonderful Cayman Islands, we have another uh, question here on WhatsApp. It says, uh, a person is inquiring as to whether or not there are any more stalls uh, available for there, Pirates Week. There as well. are. There are a few. Very few, though. So And the contact, how do they... How, if, come, if in, come into come the, the office. The That's the best way to do it. Location? Because, um, it's, we're located on 10 Shedden Road. The best way to describe is the KFC with all the chickens <laughs> next to it. <laughs> we're above the that KFC. Chickens, right? Yes. <laughs> The most popular KFC in the world. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so again, folks, thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting your radio station, Radio K Man. Have a great day. And as usual, we ask the good Lord to bless these three beautiful, wonderful Cayman Islands. For the record is brought to you by Fidelity Bank. For all your banking and pension needs, call or visit a Fidelity branch today. Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealership serving the Cayman Islands. And Cayman Pharmacy Group, with locations in West Base and Professional Pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. And Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling Seaboard Marine at 949-4977.